Hello everybody, this is Abraham with No Short Computer Services and what I got for you today is uh, <clears throat> a MacBook Pro A1502. This is upside down. And the board number is 820-3476-A. Apple likes to hide these numbers, but there's always going to be a board number. And in this case, it's located over here. So if you're looking for your board number, it's going to be between, well, this connector and this connector. <clears throat> in, our lower, in the lower left of the memory banks. All right, what happened with this board or this Mac is there was a small spill. The spill <clears throat> did not cause major problems, meaning that it was still working. You would turn on the computer and you can still, still, still hear the post sound. And uh, if you connect the computer to an external monitor, you could see the image and it was working. So it was worth investigating whether this one can be repaired. After careful disassembly, I have found that if you look over here, these are the marks left by the liquid. And these marks, if we put the board, that's why the board was upside down. If we put the board back, these marks correspond to, uh, let's see, where are they? So they would be, let me find these parts here. Gotta look closer. All right, so they were uh, close to these two capacitors over here. Well, naturally, first thing you do is to check whether those capacitors are good. If they're blown, then um, you could have a problem. The capacitors were okay. That meant I had to pull out the uh, schematics and board view. And that's where we're going right now. In pulling up the schematics, we can see that these two capacitors are over here. C8303 and C8300. How you know that? You pull out the board view. Uh, on a board view, you can actually see the whole board. And if we zoom out a little bit, that's the location of these two capacitors that were basically uh, liquid damaged or liquid got onto them. Uh, you find these two capacitors and you start tracing what's happening where. Uh, so let's open the schematic. All right, these two capacitors have a trace running to number one pin of the LCD connector which is PPV out S0 LCD backlight. Well, I didn't say that, but uh, the problem with this computer was the backlight wasn't working. And uh, you check that by shining a light. <clears throat> you take the uh, screen and you shine a light through the Apple logo. And you shine a light long enough to see the information on the screen. You first see the Apple logo, then you see, depending on uh, uh, what you did with the computer, if you pulled out the hard drive, you're going to see a folder with a question mark in it. Uh, but this basically means that the screen is working, the board is working, everything's working except the backlight on the screen. Then what you do is take a look if the screen itself has a problem. Best way to do that if you have a spare screen. If you don't have a spare screen, you got to open up the bottom of this. And the way you open this up is uh, you remove the little plastic uh, kind of covers on the sides. And this bottom slides towards the right side. If, the, if you're looking at the screen this way, the plastic slides that way. Once you slide it, you lift it up and you get access to the uh, connector well no you get access to the underlying 
uh, electronics here and these are the antennas there's a couple of screws that you remove to lift up the Wi-Fi antennas and then you see the actual electronics for the screen now this bo uh, board here <clears throat> is connected to the screen directly there is no reason to remove this board or screws that hold it down you can do irreversible damage to your screen so screens okay do not touch this board what you're after is this connector right here um, that basically connects the top section to the bottom section and this wire has two connectors on its side this one goes to the board this one goes to the screen I pulled this one out and I saw that there was a little bit you can see the darkened pins a little bit of corrosion here all right now I cleaned that up I wasn't sure if there was an issue with connectors with cable I did have one of the times that this actual cable went bad instead I cleaned it up and I did uh, check trace check bit, uh, you know just using a voltmeter between each pin and they seemed okay now if you have uh, normal um, sound you know like when you put the volt voltmeter um, you got a beep and uh, I checked the beep between the uh, motherboard connector and the connector on the actual um, board on the screen each one I checked there's only 30 of them so it, it's possible just a little time consuming but I did it it doesn't mean that it's gonna work it means that the connection is present but it might not work for high frequency now we're talking about um, backlight that's simply power going to the screen which means if your backlight isn't working you can use the voltmeter to or multimeter I should say to check each connection if you have good connection you can safely bet that the screen will work there is an issue with the motherboard all right let's get back to the schematic <clears throat> in looking at the schematic I saw that we're getting back to our capacitors so these capacitors are sitting on the ground and the top is providing the uh, voltage for the LCD backlight we just do a search for this PPV out as zero LCD backlight on your schematic and this is the other part of the schematic this is where it comes from so here is the PPV out and you can trace it going through this coil to this component here what I did was I measured the voltage on here and I measured the voltage on here there was voltage here plus 12 volt there was nothing on here first I suspected that this is the component that went bad this is an easy to find component if you do any kind of board repairs uh, I pulled out this component from another board um, and uh, replaced it didn't make a difference which means that this component was simply not being activated so in tracing how it gets activated we come to this component uh, this is the LCD backlight driver uh, chip uh, which sends it takes the voltage from I believe pin number 11 or 9 and 10 uh, let me see it is I believe it's pin number 11 <clears throat> that's where the voltage comes in and it comes out from pin number 2 there was no voltage on pin number or I'm sorry there was voltage on pin number 11 but there was nothing coming out from pin number 2 uh, checking and replacing this component was kind of useless because there was no voltage coming out to drive it to send the voltage back out to the uh, LCD all in all I made a bet that this was the bad component in looking at the board view you can get the actual part number so I cross-referenced that and uh, couldn't find it in my normal sources in other words I could find it in China but I didn't want to wait um, 
I went to dear Dr. Rossman. And here it is. I got a part from Louis Rossman from New York. Here is the old part. Okay. And let's look at the board here. Here is the part. Replaced it. And guess what? The whole thing started working. Uh, so, for the A1509, uh, is it? Yeah, oh, 1502. If you have no backlight, uh, this is the component that controls um, your voltage. You just check the voltages, and if voltage is coming in but not coming out, big bet that that's bad. Not necessarily that's the only case, depending on your problem, depending on the spill that you have. But in my case, this is the one that went bad. So basically what happened, the two capacitors that got uh, liquid on them, wait, where are they? These two little guys got shorted out. Basically, these two little guys sit between plus and minus. Plus coming out from this chip and minus sitting on uh, the um, you know, case, the frame. Those got shorted, blew out the chip. Uh, there's also um, fuses. And for some reason, I have never seen those fuses blow. I don't even know why they're put in there, but they... They were okay. The fuses are okay, but the chip got blown. Thankfully, it wasn't a crazy expensive chip. It was about, what, $15? And thankfully, Louis got it for me and, uh, you know, saved me a bunch of money on repairs. Hopefully, this helps somebody save a few bucks on repairing on your own. Um, if you are not shop set up for repairs or board level repairs and you have no idea how to use it, it's your first time, you can, I mean, you're welcome to try it, but you're going to need some tools. Let me show you what you're going to need. The first tool you're going to need is a voltmeter. Volt, voltmeter, multimeter, <laughs> voltimeter, <laughs> multimeter. Uh, well, actually, this is the second tool. The first tool, I assume you're going to need a computer to download the board view, to download the schematics and uh, um, being able to follow that schematics. I mean, for those that do not know electronics, this is a bunch of gibberish. What do these size? Uh, this may as well be Chinese uh, uh, hieroglyphs. Well, not hieroglyphs, Egyptian hieroglyphs or Chinese whatever letters that they use. In other words, this is not your uh, straightforward uh, knowledge that you can acquire without any education. This is education. Um, all this stuff is possible to get, but, uh, you know, be aware that you're going to need to have a lot of learning before you can start following um, these schematics. So, first tool, and what you do with this is V for checking voltages, okay, and this beeper here is for checking continuity. Um, and you also check diodes, but you go through this button, okay, this button you push, it becomes a beeper, or without pushing, you can check the diodes. Uh, diodes were, um, important in this schematic to make sure that those get, didn't get blown but in short it was not a highly complicated repair what was complicated about it is trying to find which part caused the issue and i did make one mistake in replacing um, this little guy also the board view and schematic was slightly different from what was on the board itself you can see those six little connectors next to those little pads in the actual schematic there is a chip in there so on the actual board they decided they didn't need to put that in for whatever reason um, but you will find things like that that the actual board is going to be might be slightly different from what you find in schematic so schematic actually shows circuitry in there and chips that go in there. The actual board didn't have that. And as you can see, 
there are many places that uh, reserve, um, reserve the spaces for chips, but there are no chips present. So as they manufacture things, they decide, you know, there's really no reason to put something in there. Or there, this same board may be used in a different application and a different computer that has slightly different options on it. I, I don't know. Um, that's what uh, that's what happens you know uh, you will have schematic that will include all this stuff and on the actual board just ignore that circuitry if it doesn't exist on this board doesn't mean you're going to have to find these chips and put them in no just follow what you have uh, follow the voltages follow the um, pathways oftentimes from liquid damage you may have a pathway that was damaged because it uh, depends on which you spill, it might actually corrode the um, copper itself. And if that's the case, you're going to have to find where is the damage. And you can simply run a wire from one place to another and uh, fix it that way. All right. Hopefully this helps somebody save a few bucks and get your computer back running. If you have any questions, ask them below. If you like this video, give me a like. Subscribe, enjoy, and save money.